Hello everyone and welcome back to the Out of the Park Developments YouTube channel. My name is Alex Murray, also known as AZ Axel, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial about the scouting system in OOTP. We will be reviewing your scouting director, your scouting budgets, and how to get the most out of your scouting system for the benefit of your organization. So, if you've got your OOTP game open, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, for this tutorial we will begin on the scouting page underneath of your team's homepage listing at this point. And scouting, as we talked about in our staff personnel tutorial, it, there is some ratings on your scouting director that we first of all need to talk about. So this whole entire left side of the screen is going to be all about your scouting director and who you've got signed up as your scouting director. And again, those scouting ratings at the bottom are going to be important for us to be able to identify how well our scouting director is going to do at his job. So again, those need to be as high as possible. We've talked a little bit about the projection, which is basically favoring tools or favoring abilities. And we're going to talk today about how you can have direct control over the scouting of your organization. So on top of the scouting ratings and how good your scout is, we also have scouting budgets, which you can see right here in the middle of the screen. And you can change how much money you put into your scouting budget. Now, there is usually a league baseline and a league maximum that you are allowed to use for scouting, all right? So you can't just throw $100 million into scouting and just expect it to be perfect, all right? That's not going to be possible. So for um, for your league, there's going to be different minimums and maximums that you can do for each system. So um, basically, you'll want to make sure that you're aware of what those minimums and maximums are. So that way, you do not um, have to worry about going too low or too high at that point. But basically, what we put into this budget is then controllable with the sliders down below them. So these are all sliders from 0 to 100%, and we are permitted to slide them to our heart's content for whatever we'd like to be able to put into these different categories. So first of all, let's talk about what these categories are. So Major League Scouting, Minor League Scouting, Amateur Scouting, International Scouting. Much like we talked about the scouting ratings, these correlate just fine, even though they're out of order, with all of these four. So you're going to want to make sure that you pair up what your scout is good at with these sliders. At, at least do that. But here's my other recommendation. In our last video, or at least in our staff video, we talked about why you would want to have a high rating for scout majors, for scout minors, for international, for amateurs. Depending upon how you want to approach rebuilding your team or finding players for your team, you may want to have more money into one of these categories or two of these categories than others. So... Again, for example, if you're building a dynasty team, if you've got the players you need, you may not need to put much money into the amateur scouting and minor league scouting budgets at this point. You might be more inclined to really boost up your major league scouting and maybe your international scouting to find some newer players, but then you might be okay with way less for amateur scouting and minor league scouting. So again, you can change these to depend upon how your team is focusing on acquiring new players. If you're all in on international prospects and you're big on that, bump that as high as you can. That is not a problem to do that. You can absolutely do that. I highly recommend it. Something like this where you can do international scouting pretty high, amateur scouting could be second at that point, and then you're more so in a rebuilding phase. You can do stuff like that. So meddle around with these um, sliders to your heart's content and try to figure out what you want to put the most amount of money into because, again, that's going to be kind of just where your focus is for your team with your scouting budget and it'll help you it'll help your director be able to kind of know what to prioritize first okay at that point now speaking of prioritizing and priorities down below these little sliders is your scouting priorities option this is something that we added very recently this gives your scout an actual alignment for what to start to get reports about regarding players so you can actually at a maximum of 20 of these add in different types of priorities. So if you are saying to your scout, hey, we have a lack of shortstops. Find me all of the shortstops you can. So you can put in a priority for shortstops. You can even reference the age you'd like to have them be, 
the nationality if you have a preference for that. Um, if you're playing in a fictional league where you have to have certain types of foreign player limits, that might be important. Um, but you can also then specify if they bat or throw a certain way, if they're major or minor league players, and then the quality, the minimum quality of the player, as well as a player type. So you could actually tell it to be, you know, a defensive wizard shortstop. We could actually look for a defensive wizard shortstop who is, you know, good potential ability at minimum in the minor leagues. We don't really care if they throw or bat left. It's not a problem for us. Um, unknown is fine for the nationality at this point. And we could say age maximum of like 23. So that could be one of our preferences. We want a young minor league prospect that's a shortstop, which is a defensive wizard. And your scout will go out and try to locate and give you updates. He'll actually go out and find players who match this priority. And he will, I believe, tell you about them via email as well. And he'll actually tell you which ones he believes we should go out and try to acquire via trade. Or if it's a free agent, I believe he'll also tell you we can sign them right now. So this is a great way to be able to have the AI actively participating in your own you know, player hunts and your ability to locate players that are good for your team. So don't, don't neglect using the scouting priorities to the utmost ability that you can for your team. Let the AI help you find the players you're looking for versus hoping and praying you just run into somebody eventually down the road. All right? All right. Let's talk lastly about the task list. Now, your head scouting director, when you start up a brand new game, is going to have nobody on this list. Now, as the days go by, he is still going to be actively scouting other players. So don't believe for a second that he's just, you know, sitting on his hands and doing nothing, all right? He will be actively looking and doing his general scouting duties over the course of the regular season. However, you can personally request scouting reports of not only your own players, but other players in the league and even in any of the uh, player draft pools. You can select them, right-click on them, and request a scouting report, and it will show up here on this list as a means by which we can have our scouting director prioritize a player to be able to get an instant, well, not an instant, but a as quickly as possible scouting report about that player. Now, these do take time. He does have to go find the player, you know, if, it, if they're on the road or something like that. It does take time for him to go and observe the player get his report written up, and then come back to you with his report. If you add a bunch of people to this list, this green icon up in the, in the middle top section will become yellow and potentially red. And what that means is that you are starting to interfere with his general scouting duties. If it turns red, that means he's not doing much general scouting duties because he's doing all of your prioritized requested scouting reports, all right? Do not push your scout into the red without good reason. That means that you're going to start to lose the accuracy of your reports on not only your players, but other players in the league, as well as anybody else that you're not prioritizing in this list. So be careful with how much you do in terms of requesting scouting reports. You don't want to flood it too much. Now, again, this is still a great way to be able to get a report about a player that you're very interested in, a prospect that you want to draft. Uh, again, it takes some time, but it is something that you can keep and use to be able to prioritize stuff and to direct your scouting director. All right. And lastly, you can see what the scouting director has recently done in terms of scouting. So if you want to go back and look at anything, you can look at all of his past history of recently scouted players. You can also sort it about ones that you have specifically tasked him to do. So it doesn't have to be just everybody. It could be just the players you asked him to do. You can organize it by that by clicking the checked box up here saying only from tasks. And that covers scouting in OOTP. I hope this video was helpful for all of you out there in learning how to get started with OOTP and especially with the scouting system. We will continue to upload more tutorials and other videos down the road, so please do subscribe to this channel, and I will see you all in the next one.